there, guys. Up to the time. First thing is you can observe how I have my workspace set up. I have the instructions on the right hand side, basically my notes, and I have my AutoCAD on my left hand side. So I'm able to look at my instructions while drawing at the same time. I think this layout is very efficient and I would advise most people to follow this style. So the first thing I've noticed is that I need to create some circles. So I'm just gonna delete these and I'm gonna show you how I've actually created these circles. So I have my A and I have my B. Circle A is radius 75, so I'm gonna hit C for circle. And then I am able to draw a circle that is radius 75, type in 75, that's how I get my radius. And you know what, I want to change my, let me just quickly change over to my construction layer. Then I'm gonna minimize that, yeah, back to there. So I'm over in my construction layer now, and I'm gonna draw a line from A to B, which is 205 millimeters. It's my A to B, and I'm going to transfer this circle. No, I'm going to keep this circle in my outline because this circle is going to be a final circle. So I need to create another circle at this point here, which is B, and that circle is going to be 50 millimeter radius. So I'm going to hit C to bring up my circle command. I hit enter to activate. Then I go over here, I open my compass slightly, then I type in 50 millimeters. So that is my, those are my two circles, A and B. Circle A being on the left, circle B being on the right. Now I need to place my text box now. I'm just gonna go over, so I'm on my text layer, and I'm going to use a command called multi-text. To get that command, the shortcut is MT. MT brings up multi-text, I hit enter to activate, then I come at the point and I create a small box, and then I type A in there. I hit enter, and then I close it, close text editor. Close text editor, and I repeat this process at B. MT, select the point, create a box, type in B, I close my editor. Now I think these these um these sizes are too small. So I'm just going to go over here, highlight them. I'm just going to double click on the text and then go over to the type text style and change this to uh, let's say a five. I think five is good. Now seeing I've changed one, I don't have to change the other. I can just match drop the property and to match drop M A is the shortcut, which allows you to match drop property. So I'm gonna select the properties of B and I want to transfer them over to A. And that looks good. Also, I wanna select the circle properties of A because A circle has been drawn on my outline layer. So I've selected that and I transfer that over to B. So now B has been transferred over to my outline layer. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to create a midpoint between A and B. Now, how am I going to do that? I'm going to select my line tool, alpha line, and then I'm going to first, I'm going to hover over where I think the middle is. And I see a triangle, a green triangle, and it identifies that this is the midpoint there. You can, you can, you can see the word midpoint there. But a lot of people might be doing that and you might run into trouble not finding your midpoint. That's because your object snap settings might be turned off. So you need to come to this point here of the screen on the screen and look for something called object snap. Snap cursor to 2D reference points. To turn on and turn off your object snap settings, you can use the hotkey F3. All right, so we can open up the object snap menu by pressing the arrow. And then that brings us to a lot of options. And these options work with 2D points, with 2D lines. So you can have endpoint, midpoint, center. And the ones that I really use daily are endpoint, midpoint, center, and perpendicular. For this exercise, we need midpoint and endpoint. 
And that's how I was able to get my midpoint. So once these are ticked, we can just click on the outside and we can continue with this demonstration because now that tells us once I hover over here, that will calculate my midpoint. So I need to place a point there of a reference, a reference point. So how do I do that? I type P-O-I-N-T, I spell out the word point. And I go over to that point and I stamp in my point there. So that's my point there, X marks the spot. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change my layers cause I realize I'm in my text layer, but I'm gonna go back to my construction layer cause I want to draw a circle, a semicircle at that point. I hit C for circle. And I draw my semicircle open up to B or A. It doesn't matter because the distance should be the same. And I'm going to trim this now because it's now a circle and I want to trim it so that we have a semicircle. So I'm going to go into the menu trim by typing TR, trim, enter to activate the menu, select the objects I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the straight line A to B and I'm going to be using the circle. And once I selected those two objects, I hit enter and I remove the part of the circle that I don't want. So now I have my semicircle and I have my midpoint. I'm going to actually place my midpoint. I'm going to join my midpoint using a center layer so that I get a line that looks like this. Of course, I have this line already stored on my template. So that's why I'm able to just draw this quickly without having to set up the properties of that line. The next thing I need to do is I need to come and observe the formula for the construction circle. The construction circle is 125 millimeters, but how did we get that? How did we arrive at that? That is when we add 75 millimeters, which is our circle A, plus 50 millimeters, which is our circle B. We get a total of 125 millimeters, and this is our construction circle. We can place the construction circle at either A or B. It doesn't matter. We will get the same result. I'm going to place it at B. So I'm going to go C for circle, enter to activate the circle menu, start at B, select my first point, which is at B, open up, and I am going to type 125, and that is my radius. Now, what has happened is I've created my construction circle on my center layer. No problem, I'm going to match drop, MA, for the command match drop, enter, select the yellow, and then go over to there, my construction circle, and it matches that property. So now my construction circle is on the proper layer. Now, what I need to observe is the point where the construction circle interacts with the semicircle, right at this point here. I'm going to place a point there, and I like placing my points on uh, using my text layer. So I'm going to go back on my text layer just to place the point there. To place a point, P-O-I, and then you can see it prompts the point menu or the point tool. You can hit enter, and that's to activate tool and then you press left click on the position to actually stamp the point in. Now I'm going to get off of my text layer and I'm going to go back on my construction layer. And let's connect this now. Now this point here, I'm going to call it point C. So I'm going to copy A, let's copy A, the actual letter, over to here. And then I'm just going to change that A to C. Yeah, that's brilliant. Good. I should probably place midpoint, the word midpoint here in the middle so that those following at home will be able to see and understand what, what's going on here. Midpoint. Sorry, midpoint. So we have the circle at A, the circle at B. The distance between A to B is 205. We have our construction circle, which is the only yellow circle. And that is radius 125. We then have a semicircle, which starts at our midpoint between A and B, which is right here. So now we have all this information. How do we actually work with this to create an internal tangent? Now, we're going to connect a line from 
A to C, or from C to A. Alpha line, activate the line command, and uh, we do something like that. So that line is from A to C. Now at this point, we need, this is on the construction circle. So the line starts on the construction circle and then it comes to the axis A. We need to transfer this line AC over to the real circles, circle A and circle B. So we need to get from C right to B, somewhere in this area here. Now how are we going to do that? We know the difference between we know this circle has been created at 125, and we know circle B is 75. So let me subtract 125 um, from, sorry, from 50. We are going to get a total of 75. So the distance that this line needs to travel until it reaches B is 75 millimeters. So I can offset this line, AC, offset, hit O, and that brings up the offset menu or the offset tool, and then you hit enter to activate, and then it asks me to specify a distance. So without me doing anything, I'm going to just specify a distance, and the distance that I want to specify is 75 millimeters. So I'm going to put that in there, and now I'm ready to select the line. Select the object, and I just bring it in the direction. After selecting the object, I push it in the direction that I want to go, and I want to go in a downward direction. So I put it there and then I click, left click to activate that. That's the direction I want to go. And here we have it. We have my two circles, two unequal circles, and the line of tangent right here. Now, I'm going to escape to get out of that offset command because I no longer need it. And I'm going to transfer this line from my construction circle to the outline. Yeah, I've done a different way of transferring, if you guys recognize that. I actually grabbed the line, went to the layer manager, and I selected the layer that I wanted to place the line on rather than do max drop. So now we have it. We have our problem completed. But to prove that A and B are in tangent by this line here, we need to put in our 90 degrees. Anytime a line passes and touch the circle, the point where it touched the circle, which is at this point here, I'm going to actually place a point in there by using my point command right here. And if you look, we see something that appears. We see a circle and we see a line above a circle as, an, as a symbol. And when I just leave it there, the word tangent comes up. So that tells me that I have done something right, that I actually have this line and this circle in tangent. But, so that's just the computer telling me that it's right. But if I wanted to prove it to myself and prove it to others, at that point, I have created a point there and I am going to connect here back to A. And also from this point on the circle back to B, the axis. So let's just do that. And uh, the angle between this line and this line is 90 degrees. How do I prove that? I can draw a circle there and then trim the circle so I just have the art remaining and then measure the art and I'm going to see that the art is going to tell me it's 90 degrees. So I'm going to draw my circle first. C for circle. That's the command. C for circle. Enter. I just created a random circle, small radius, doesn't have to be anything big. And then I'm now going to trim. TR for trim, I select my circle, I select the tangent line, and I select the line going back to A, and I hit enter, and I remove the unwanted bits. So it leaves me with a 90 degree arc. Now let me just prove it by going into properties. So while I have the line selected, I'm going to right click and come. 90 degrees. So it tells me my total angle is 90 degrees there at that point. So that's how I know that this line is tangent to both these circles. And that's how we create an internal tangent, guys. I hope you were able to understand that. I am going to change these arcs here because I don't really like to see them. I like to put in my 90 degree symbols, which are, I'm going to offset. 
five millimeters from each line, this line, that line, till I form a 90 degree. And then I'm just going to fill it. I'm going to show you another command, fill it. You can come up here and you can select fill it from the menu at the top. Or you can hit F and it brings up the fill it menu. Hit enter, select the object, your first object, your second object, and look at that. I've created my 90 degrees there. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to repeat this command. So seeing that I was just using the command, I can press either enter or space bar to actually bring back up the same command. And then I'm going to select my two lines, and that's it. So I'm going to keep this all in one layer. I think I'm going to put them in the construction layer. So I'm going to match drop, MA to match drop, and I'm going to match drop all this. 90 degree angle stuff on the construction layer and I'm going to keep these two lines I'm going to place them into my outline layer so that you guys can see it so when I turn off my uh, construction layer I'm going to go on my outline layer and then I'm going to turn off the construction layer you can turn off layers by going over to the light bulb um, whenever you go into the layer menu, you see a light bulb, you see um, something called freeze, which is, this looks like a sun. <laughs> you can freeze the layer, or you can also lock the layer. But for right now, we're just going to turn off the layer. So just turn off the light bulb, and we can see that the layer is off. It's still there, and uh, we're able to see the line being tangent to the circle, and we can see going back to the root of the circle, which is the axis, it creates the 90 degrees as it should. And we have here our red line, which is our center line between A and B, which is very important in helping us to come to create this construction. So let's just turn back on our construction layer. And yeah, that is it. And subscribe to the channel because I'll be doing more things um, with tangents and just general geometry, plain and solid geometry. So thank you and have a good day.